Hey guys, the Black Critic Guy back from my week-long hiatus. I apologize for the lack of content last week. To be perfectly honest, I was a bit burnt out and exhausted. I just didn't really feel like making a video that week. I wasn't motivated into making videos. So I decided, you know what, Tony? Just take a break, take a breather, relax, go do some other things, watch some other TV shows, catch up on some homework, rejuvenate your soul. But I'm proud to say that I'm finally back with some new content and a new video for you guys. And before we get to this new video, I would just like to let you know that I did make a new anime poll for the month of October. Horror month. <laughs> So if you would like to vote on which anime you would love to see me review for the month of October, please click the link in the description, go to the poll, and let your voice be heard. Now to get to the real topic at hand for this video, and that is my top 10 forgotten TV shows from my childhood. These are the TV shows that I watched and enjoyed as a kid, but have since been kind of forgotten by the mainstream media or just aren't talked as much as other TV shows from our childhoods. I know many of you are gonna be like, wait a minute, Tony, I still remember these shows. I haven't forgotten about them. And that's fine and dandy. You remember these shows, but if you were to ask a random person on the street from our generation or a classmate in college or high school about any of these shows on this list, a majority of them are going to say, nope, I don't remember those shows. In fact, I dare each and every one of you watching this video right now, all 24,900 plus subscribers of mine, to share this video with all your friends and actually see if they remember any of the shows mentioned on this list, honorable mentions included. And if they can get a majority of them right, about 10 out of 17, then you've proved me wrong. But if they can only guess like two or four, I proved my point. And as always, before we get to the list, I do have a few honorable mentions, and they are as follows. I am Weasel. Just Jordan, The Life and Times of Juniper Lee, Cat Scratch, Dave the Barbarian. I really want to know if anybody remembers that show. I actually really enjoyed that show, and I was heartbroken when they canceled it. I thought it was funny. Uh, Mike Lug and Og, a very obscure show on Cartoon Network. And finally, Wayside. Starting off our list in the most unappealing way is my number 10 choice, But Ugly Martians. Now, I'll be honest, I wasn't a huge fan of this show. I really hated the CGI in this show. But I remember the show solely for the fact that the theme song for the show was actually pretty catchy. It was like, we are the Martians, the but ugly Martians, da 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 da, something like that. And it follows these three Martians who come to Earth to take over the world, but they decided, you know what? We actually really enjoy Earth and we don't want to take over the world. And we just want to have fun and play games and befriend these kids. It was an interesting concept, although it's been done to death before and again I, I enjoyed the show now and again it was the theme song that really sold me but I put it at number 10 just because of how obscure it is and I bet you none of you really remember but ugly Martians I'll be honest I don't really remember many episodes in but ugly Martians either but regardless of their ugly appearances they have made my number 10 spot scaring the bejesus out of me as a little kid is my number nine choice oh! Real Monsters! A Nickelodeon classic, in my opinion, created by the same people that made the Rugrats and Wild Thornberries that was sadly pushed to the wayside and forgotten by the main populace. I remember watching this show as a kid and just being horrified by all the monsters in the show. I mean, they looked ugly, grotesque, and terrifying. So I gave the show a lot of props for authenticity and creating such a great mood for the show. Cause they all live in a pretty terrible place. It's either a sewage drain or a dump yard. I mean, they live in a pretty unappealing place and the show just comes off that way, unappealing. Like, you would never want to be in this place. But I gave props to the creators for actually 
going there, like going the distance. Because their other two shows, they're very lighthearted, they're very comical, and you know, look at all these bright colors. This show was dark, it was messy, it just was so unappealing that I thought it was really creative that they were able to do something like that. Not only that, but each and every one of the monsters were unique in their own way, and some of them are very likable. I, for one, really like the three main monsters. Like, you got this one guy who holds his eyes up with his hands. I thought that was really funny, and I liked his character. You got this one, like, skinny girl who has black and white stripes and big eyes and big mouth. I, I don't remember what her name was. And then you got the short, pink, elf-looking-like monster. I love the three main characters. They were really cool. And their cameo on the Rugrats? priceless. All Real Monsters is one of Nickelodeon's most unique TV shows that really stuck with me even after it ended. My number eight choice wants to take over the world, but it's not Pinky in the Brain. No, no. It's Evil Kung Carne. I found this show very interesting as a kid for the main fact that the main character is a brain and its stomach attached to this bear because his body got destroyed and so they gave him this bear as his new body and he has his little minions then they try to take over the world and he gets, he gets thwarted time after time by a fish. A fish. You thought Harry the Platypus was weird. Think about a fish. A, it's, it was a goldfish beating the crap out of a bear, a brain and its stomach, and a whole entire evil organization. That right there, it's, that's just hilarious. Although very short-lived, I thought the show had a lot of potential and a lot of things to offer. I like the characters, I like the concept, although it has been done before. I just found it very interesting that our main character is a talking brain, his talking stomach that is attached to a bear, and they get beat up by a fish. That, that's just hilarious to me. Numero sete is El Tigre, The Adventures of Manny Rivera. Yet another short-lived show that only lasted one season about this boy named Manny Rivera who becomes this superhero known as El Tigre and he has to fight all these various villains and his grandfather, I believe, was a villain as well, which I found very interesting. But the reason that I put El Tigre on this list was just how unique the animation style was. As a kid, I never saw animation quite like El Tigre, The Adventures of Manny Rivera. And the show was just a whole lot of fun. It felt like it was a mix between Mucha Lucha, if you guys remember that show about kids attending a school for luchadors, like future luchadors, and had a kick-ass theme song that I still remember to this day and sing, and Danny Phantom. It felt like a mix between those two shows, and again, it had such a unique animation style. I really saw a lot of potential in El Tigre, and I would have loved to see a second season, kind of see more of this character, but I guess the show wasn't doing good in the ratings, and they just said, you know what? Nope, drop it, we don't need it. But it breaks my heart that, you know, nobody really remembers this show and how unique it was. I mean, the animation was amazing. And I'm so glad that the creator of the show finally got his second chance by making his first ever feature film called The Book of Life, which looks amazing. Definitely has kind of like the same essence of El Tigre. But if you have not seen the show, please check it out. If you're a fan of animation in general, you gotta see it, it's really good. Stranded in the middle of nowhere is my number six choice, Brandy and Mr. Whiskers. A show about a pampered dog and a dumb rabbit that are lost in the middle of the woods and have to survive, that is a formula for some great comedy. And I actually thought the show was really funny, albeit a bit repetitive. I mean, they did kind of play off the same things over and over and over again, but the characters were still a lot of fun. And to see them kind of getting used to jungle life, that was pretty interesting. I mean, the theme song was catchy, the animation was solid, the stories were interesting and hilarious, and I really liked the bond and relationship between Brandy and Mr. Whiskers. I felt like it was really dynamic, although a bit abusive and hateful from time to time, at the end of the day, they always come back together and realize that they care for each other. To sum it all up, Brandy and Mr. Whiskers was just a fun show in general. Enough said. Chalk, 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 chalk. Rudy's got the chalk at the number five spot, Chalk Zone. I know it's very shocking to see Chalk Zone on this list considering that it has one of the most epic 
theme songs ever for a children's television show. And I'm not talking like Justice League epic, I'm talking like cartoony epic. This song is just freaking mesmerizing and so memorable. I mean, that guitar, man, goes I remember watching the show as a kid and listening to that theme song, I'm like, man, this sh this show's gonna be epic, isn't it? I mean, I'm so hype, I'm so energetic. And then it turns out to be a show about a kid that finds magical chalk that can open up a, a hole into chalk zone, this other world that's just made of chalk. And I was like, interesting concept, but that theme song is way too epic for this show. I mean, the show in itself is not truly epic. I mean, it's really funny. It's really fun. The characters are very memorable, but it's not epic like that theme song. I mean, that theme song, guys. I know I keep talking about it, but really, I'm gonna put a link to the theme song in the description. Listen to it. It's awesome. It's epic. And the reason I said I, I can't fathom putting it on this list is because how could you forget that theme song? That theme song, how could you forget it? But besides that epic theme song that it had, the show also had a lot of other good qualities as well. Like very fun and interesting characters as I mentioned earlier. The animation style I thought was really unique and well done. The world of Chalk Zone looked really awesome. It looked like it was really made of chalk. And some of the stories were pretty interesting. And again, guys, that theme song. Oh my god, that theme song! It breaks my heart that the show was cancelled so prematurely and we weren't able to see the conclusion of the show, by the way. And most people don't really think about Chalk Zone anymore, which breaks my heart because it was such a unique show. It had so much to offer, and again, that theme song. And that is why I put Chalk Zone at the number 5 spot. Furiously chopping up wood is my number 4 choice, The Angry Beavers. This show is basically the animated version of The Odd Couple, but with beavers. Because you got these two supposedly bachelor beavers, because you never really see them hang out with many girls in the show, that are complete opposites of each other, and they live together in a house slash dam. It's not, I don't really know if it's a dam or not, but they live in a house together, and they quarrel a lot. The premise alone writes the series. The formula of the show is the odd couple with Looney Tune antics thrown into it. You got Daggett and Norm, they get into an argument, they disagree with each other, things go out of hand, it just blows out of proportions, and by the end everything is fixed and calm for the next time that they get into another argument and things blow out of proportion, which makes for many hilarious situations. I remember as a kid, I just love the banter between Daggett and Norm. They were so hilarious. And the situations that they would get into really made me laugh. And like most of the shows on this list, the theme song was pretty catchy as well. It just breaks my heart that not a lot of people talk about the Angry Beavers anymore. It just makes me feel like they don't remember the show that much. Which is just a damn shame considering that Angry Beavers was one of Nickelodeon's funniest shows without a doubt. Taking us on a musical and psychedelic journey, man, is my number three choice. Class of 3000. Yet another short-lived show that starred Andre 3000 from OutKast and he also created the show as a music teacher who teaches his kids about music, life lessons, and takes them on pretty trippy and psychedelic musical numbers, man. All the musical numbers had a very psychedelic feel to them, almost 70s-esque. The show was unique as a whole, from its characters to its animation style to its musical numbers, the show had its own groove to it, its own essence that made it so memorable and enjoyable. I liked all the characters, I especially liked Andre 3000's character who bears a striking resemblance to him and I like his character design for it. The musical numbers were very catchy, some are forgettable, I'll be honest, but most of them, I really liked it, I grooved out to them and I used to sing them as a kid. Class of 3000 was without a doubt an underrated gem of a show and I will never forget about it. Saving the world while also keeping a social life as a teenager is my number two choice, my life as a teenage robot. I was so addicted 
to this show when I was a kid. I watched every single episode, and that's no lie, guys. I only stopped watching it because they stopped showing it on Nickelodeon. They prematurely canceled it, and apparently they sent the rest of the episodes to Nicktoons, a channel that I didn't have in Guam, and it broke my heart because I really enjoyed watching that show about this robot named Jenny who's like this really powerful, strong robot, but also has the personality of a teenager and she kind of dealing with that whole adolescent life, but also trying to save the world. I thought it was really unique. I liked it. The characters were a lot of fun. Animation style was unique. The voice acting was pretty good as well. And did you know that Jenny was voiced by an Asian girl? I never knew that. For the life of me, I always thought it was a white girl that voiced her, but nope, she was a Japanese girl. I was like, that's pretty interesting. The stories, although mostly episodic, were really engaging. The action scenes were thrilling and a lot of fun to watch and well animated. And the relationships between the characters, I thought, were really well done. Especially the strong friendship between Jenny and Bradley. And I really wanted them to be a couple by the end of the series, but... We never got to see that come to fruition, I guess. Cancelled way before its time and forgotten by most people, my life as a teenage robot was just an exciting, addicting, and overall entertaining children's TV show. And now it's time to introduce the head honcho of them all, number one. And what show could that be? What show did I thoroughly enjoyed watching as a kid that has since been forgotten by most people in my generation nowadays? Well, that show is Cousin Skeeter. Just like my life as a teenage robot, I was addicted to Cousin Skeeter. It was my favorite live action TV show at the time, besides All That and Keenan and Kel, which All That was transitioning to new cast members and Keenan and Kel got canceled or they went through their run so it was over. All that was left was Cousin Skeeter and I watched that show religiously. I really enjoyed it. I liked the characters, I liked the comedy, I loved Cousin Skeeter and not only that, they gave us the greatest gift of all. They introduced Megan Good to the world. And if a show could do that, that is a great show. And not only that, but as a kid, I was terrified of puppets. I thought that they were the creepiest things on the face of the planet. I hated them. But for some reason, I couldn't find myself to hate Skeeter. I mean, he was just so likable, so energetic. Someone that I just rooted for all the time and enjoyed seeing him get into situation after situation. And I never thought of him as, oh, that's a puppet in a show with a bunch of humans. I always saw him as another character as a part of the show. And that could be for the fact that nobody in the show ever treats him as a puppet either. They treat him as if he was part of the gang, as if he was another person. And again, I really enjoyed the theme song to Cousin Skeeter. It was so lively, so upbeat. It's a song that I could listen to casually over and over again, like all that. It was a really good theme song. And although Cousin Skeeter has all but disappeared from the public consciousness, it is still a show that I thoroughly enjoyed as a kid and holds a very special place in my heart, and I will never forget it. And that is why I put Cousin Skeeter at the number one spot. And that, ladies and gentlemen, concludes my list of the top 10 forgotten TV shows from my childhood. And I would like to know what you guys thought about my list. Did you agree with it? Did you disagree with it? Did you feel like I left any shows out or forgot to put a show on the list considering that this is a list of forgotten TV shows? I'm sure I might have left one or two out that I probably didn't mention that you really enjoyed. And also let me know how many of the shows mentioned in this video did you actually remember? Comment below and let me know. And that concludes the video, guys. Stay tuned for upcoming videos as well. And the live chat will be this Sunday, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Stay tuned for that. And until then, guys, hit that subscribe button if you're new to my channel. Welcome to the Black Critic Guy. Like this video if you really enjoyed it. And I'm Tony Wallace II, the Black Critic Guy. Till then, peace, YouTube.